Welcome to the Converted Podcast. My name is Lima, and I am your host. Today on the podcast with me are my dear friends, Tony and Dewan, and they have a story to share with you. I hope you have a Bible ready as you watch this podcast. Please share it with your loved ones, and please reach out to us if you have any questions about what was discussed, or if you are interested in a Bible study, check this episode out. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open my eyes, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Please open. So I'm very thankful uh, that these two are here with me, uh, and, and I hope you have your Bible with you. Uh, as we go along, we'll share some some scriptural truths that that are vital to people being converted to Christ Jesus. So. For the sake of our audience, guys, could you please introduce yourselves? <laughs> uh, aloha to everyone watching. My name is Tolia Laau Solaita the third, also known as Tony. And yeah, I'm happy to be here, share my conversion story. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I was born and raised in American Samoa. Uh, moved to Hawaii in 2019 and been here ever since. Well, what high school did you go to? Oh, yeah. Like, man, I'm forgetting all this. <laughs> uh, no. I went to Tafuna High School. Warriors. Yep. Graduated 2015. Hello, everyone. My name is Doan Nayamangalea Isolaita. I was born here in Hawaii, and then I grew up in Leone, American Samoa. I um, I went to Tafuna High School as well and graduated in 2015. Mm -hmm. And then I came out for college. Um, I attended UH Hilo for a year, and then I transferred here and attended UH West Oahu. So um, I'm still here in Hawaii, and now <laughs> wow. we attend Honolulu Church of Christ. Yes. Duane, um you mentioned you went to Tafuna. Um, are you the only one that went to Tafuna or? No, me and Crystal. Oh, you and Crystal. Yes. All right. So the younger, younger sisters got it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other two went to Leone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm very thankful guys that, that you chose to do this. It's so important. Uh, there are a lot of people, especially our people. Uh, we grow up in a, with, in a religious culture. Uh, um, our culture is very religious. Samomo uh, Mualertua, that's the old Fa'avayanga. And, and, and um, you know, we love our people and uh, we don't want, we don't want um, anyone to just have the zeal for God. We want people to have the zeal for God that's according to knowledge. Amen. Like like in Romans chapter 10 and, and the Apostle Paul talk about how he loved Israel, right? He loves his people, the Jews. And, and the issue that he had was, uh, you know, he wished the Jews would be converted to Jesus because they were still stuck on the law of Moses and, yeah. and their understanding of the law of Moses, um, not realizing that the law of Moses pointed to Jesus. And the Apostle Paul said that, you know, of them in, in Romans 10, uh, since you're there, it was, could you read verse uh, 1 through uh, 3 there? Uh, Romans 10, 1 through 3. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Romans 10, 1 through 3, and the word says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them with them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not committed to their righteousness of God. Right. And so that's that's what we're talking about. Like. Like in, in our culture, you know, I, I have a, you know, um, and, and you guys are probably hearing my story as we do these interviews. Yeah. Uh, we each have a religious background yeah. and we each grew up with a zeal and, and, and or members of our family 
have a zeal to serve the Lord. Uh, but usually uh, the issue is we're not serving the Lord the way the Lord wants us to serve him in the places where he wants us to serve him, doing the things that he wants us to do and call that service to him, right? It's usually we have all this passion and zeal for God, but not knowing what the scriptures say. And, and you know, I, I, I relate to what Paul is, is saying in this text because we love our Samoan people. We love all people. Uh, but you know how it is. You, you're drawn to your people, your yeah. Samoan people. And True. we love our Samoan people. And we want them to know the truth and come to the knowledge of the truth. So um, let me ask you guys, um, and you can take turns as well. Uh, what is, you know, what is your, talk about your religious background. Like what was the upbringing? Uh, what were the beliefs? What church? And, you know, talk about, talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'll start off like you, um, strong Methodist presence, Methodist um, religious background, and that's for um, my father's uh, church and his belief, right? And for those who don't know, <laughs> yeah. for those who don't know, my parents, no one converted after they got married. It was pretty unusual, right? Like yeah. when one person marries um they go to the guy's church or to the to the wife's church right oh yeah 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 so i'm that uh what's that what's that you called the the unusual i'm the black sheep right <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. it, 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 it didn't happen that way so yeah so so what you mean is like um um when your parents got married yes uh they didn't like like my mom she gave up her denomination mm and you know which was ccas yeah. and she went to the methodist church because my dad was in the methodist was church. in the methodist church. so yeah that didn't happen no in your parents yeah. marriage you yeah see? that that didn't happen so uh religious background in um consisted of methodist and church of latter-day saints so okay the mormon church wow yeah wow. And that's what i was um involved in growing up so which one did you attend most of? Because if that's the case, then I imagine were there some Sundays where you guys went to the Methodist <laughs> church, some Sundays uh, to the uh, Latter-day Saints church, or <laughs> or was it like morning here and evening here and vice versa? Like, no, how was that? Yeah, simply put, um, there would be some Sundays I would go Methodist worship, and then some Sundays we'd go um, Mormon, you know, Latter-day Saints worship with my mother. And man, I'm a daddy's boy, man. So <laughs> I, of course yeah. I, I attended um, the Methodist um, church more of wow. course, than, than my mother's church. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, talk about some of the, some of the thoughts you had growing up seeing that. It, it, was there ever a time where you were like, mom, why are we going here? And then we're going, and then dad, we go here. Why couldn't we go at one place? Was you know, there... um, I never generated that. Okay. I think, you know, in Psalm 1 household, whatever mom and dad says <laughs> goes. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, that's a good question because we never generated that, that thought process. Like, oh, I wonder why we're going here and going here. Because in our minds, we're like, Worshiping God, that's all that matters. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. Checking the list, right? Yeah. Yeah. So wow. that's that that's the mindset. No, wow. that was yeah. Yeah, because I, I could just see the you know, the challenges, mm. you know. Um sometimes and I heard stories where 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 in the marriage the wife comes from a, a certain religious background, the husband a, a different one, and sometimes that creates conflict in the marriage and and was there any conflict because of the of the differences in oh yeah definitely there there were a lot of conflicts uh luckily the arguments that came from denominationalism and the division between you know bring our kids to this church instead of this church luckily a lot of those arguments happened when i was way younger and i can fondly I can remember a little, but not as much. But yeah, there definitely was conflict and division, and it and it did affect my parents' marriage. Wow. Yeah, it, it it truly did. 
And and um, how, how many brothers and sisters again do you have? Oh, we um, pretty big family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, I'm the eldest of eight. Oldest yeah. of eight. Yeah. I'm wow. The eldest of eight. I have seven wow. siblings. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Athena, she's the oldest of eight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Eight. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sis, what was your? Yeah. Um, so I grew up um, CCAS, which is the, if you guys watched episode one, um, the female in there is my sister, so <laughs> you can kind of um, get a little bit of our religious background, just a little bit. But um, so we attended um, the Congregational Christian Church of American Samoa, or um, as most Samoans know, it's um, the Lokaiki, and then um in my high school years i kind of went to more of like a pentecostal a little bit i wouldn't i don't know exactly what denomination they would categorize as but that's the closest i would say it would be to but also um elementary wise i also went to the same um baptist academy as my sister so i was kind of exposed to um Baptist Baptist Church and then the Congregational Christian Church at the same time as a kid. It wasn't until high school years that I got into the, the Pentecostal kind of thing. So wow. I would say um, that Lokaiki and um, Baptist were kind of, more of Baptist was kind of closer to Pentecostal for me. Okay. Because a lot of the things that we would um, do at chapel for school was a lot of what Pentecostal did, like, um, they would have like a little worship team or a worship leader mm-hmm. and then um they would lead us in songs where we would um get up and clap and also um that one too they didn't really um emphasize the importance of baptism it was more so of um receiving jesus into your heart kind of thing so that was uh, a lot of my religious background mm-hmm. yeah yeah i i visited some of i mean Growing up in Samoa, if you had friends, you were bound to go to a, yeah. one of their religious yeah. events, exactly. right? Yeah, and and true. <laughs> I had I had friends in the Pentecostal Assembly of God, and I, I kind of see what you're talking about, you know, the altar call and yeah. ask Jesus to come into your heart and, and things like that. Um, well, uh, while, like now you know the truth, right? But looking back, looking back, and maybe... Maybe even before, you know, your conversion, um, what were some doctrinal things that that were concerning, or or what is something like for you, like in the Methodist or the Mormon Church, or for you the CCS or Pentecostal? What were what were some of the things uh, that the church did that that were questionable, or teachings that made you felt like, and I don't know if that's right, you know, like like talk about some of those things. Um, for for the Methodist side, um, from our podcast that we hosted yesterday, uh, yeah. Brother Junior brought up uh, a really good one where the preacher is, instead of preaching his whole message on the Word of God, a lot of it is involved with chieftain talk, right? Like um, the, the, words of the words of the chieftain, not everyone understands the complexity of you know someone knowledge and all that stuff and as as i was younger i'm like what did he just say (laughs) (laughs) yeah for 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 our audience that may not be familiar with uh someone culture um we we have uh two forms of language if you will we have the informal someone language which is our day-to-day talk you know and then you have the ceremonial one or the formal one where there are a lot of proverbs and uh, cultural rooted uh, type of statements that mm-hmm. that often, you know, to use the expression, fly over the heads of the people. Like we don't know what it means. Yeah. Yeah. We just know it's deeply rooted in history somewhere, yeah. Yeah. right? And and that's what you're referencing. Sometimes yes. in the in the preaching, majority of the preaching has all these ceremonial someone yeah. related proverbs, proverbs yeah. <laughs> and we call it alanga upu mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and things like that right yeah. And, and so yeah i mean in, in preaching i can see why that that could be challenging because 
I mean, you're trying to know God. Yes. Right. So talk to me about God in the language I can understand him. Yeah. Right. And, exactly. and not and not use, you know, the eloquent or excellency <laughs> of speech. And even yeah. the Apostle Paul talked about that in uh, First Corinthians in uh, First Corinthians chapter two. Um, you know, the Apostle Paul mentioned that that when he came to the Corinthians. Now, you got to understand that the Corinthians, they they were, you know, they were heavily influenced by the Greeks and the Greeks were all about their oratory and making yes. these speeches the eloquency of speech and in in uh, uh first corinthians chapter 2 the apostle paul said this and i brethren when i came to you did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of god for i determined not to know anything among you except jesus christ and him crucified i was with you in weakness in fear and in much trembling and my speech, listen to this, and my speech and my preaching were not with, with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in a demonstration of the spirit of power. I, I remember uh, we had a 2017, there was an awesome one workshop of the Churches of Christ in American Samoa, and I was invited to speak. Mm -hmm. Now, Now, you both know this. I can speak to you in Samoa in our informal language. Yes. I cannot speak to you in Samoa using the higher form of the language, yes. which is the common form used in the church. In church. Right. And so I figured, you know what, I'll just get up and preach how how I talk to people in Samoa, preach in a way that that is understandable. And one of the greatest compliments of doing that was the young people came Absolutely. up to me and said, you know, it, 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 they could understand it and they could relate it, uh, relate to it. And then, and then, um, someone preached in the in the evening, and there was the use of of the of the of the alanga upus, and, yep. and I'll tell you what, it was over my head. <laughs> you know? I mean, he used the scriptures, yeah. but he also included You're just so that. used to it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I and I felt like. Oh, well, what did he just say? You yeah. know, like, do, do I really understand that? You know, and, and um, what else it was like when I worship with Church of Latter-day Saints, there's um, hardly any Bible, you know, yeah. which is a, you know, they have their own doctrine, which um, you know, the Book of Mormon have all those, the their form of scriptures, the prophets here and there. I have, a, I have a very broad understanding on it, but mm -hmm. that's the main one that, that stuck out. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will share one of mine, and I'll share a full version of this uh, <laughs> when I do my conversion story. Um, but growing up in a Methodist church, there was a Fanga Me. Fanga Me was yearly, yearly. And when I was in it, it was such a fun time. It was a good time with family and church family a lot of dancing and 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 mainly a lot of money a lot of money being given to the church and when you see you know i remember dancing and giving all this money for for the you know for for the work of the church of the methodist church and the, the more the more i grew and the more i understood the word of god the more i i saw how how that was just you know business and yeah. it you know it, it was not it was not in any way uh the type of giving that god commands in the word Absolutely. and 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 uh and you know when the phylo kusi gets up every sunday yeah. and and yeah. you know I was yeah. <laughs> And because of the pressure, right? Because yeah. your family name is named on there True. publicly, and they're telling what you gave, and and what if, and, and you know, some families are you know middle class, lower class family, you know, poor, and 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 um, and you know, when when families can only give fifty dollars, I mean, they say it on there, and yeah. and I remember one time, I remember one time, oh man. This was quite the experience. Um, in our, I, was, I went to the Methodist Church in Fangtongo, um, and, and I don't say this to be ugly because I love all those people there and I want them to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, but 
during one of the of the events where the Philo Tusi was um, uh, he was giving the amounts where this family gave this this family gave that and it was our family a senior family and, and this was a time when my dad had a stroke and my dad no longer worked and and uh, you know our family took a hit financially i mean he was the main provider for our family and and he had a stroke and and things change and i remember the pressure that was on my mom because of this you know in 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 um in that day uh it mentioned uh because we always our family always gave a hundred dollars mm -hmm. right and and there was a lot of pride behind that right. you know that we gave we gave a hundred dollars you know a hundred dollar back then was like you know I, you know yeah. it was it was big it was a lot <laughs> you know it was big not that it's not a lot today mm -hmm. but you know how it is um and so when when we were only given 50 dollars, i remember one sunday the father of tushi said yeah and then and then i remember my mom giving me uh extra money mm -hmm. to go in live time right yeah. to go in front of the church that happens <laughs> to give it to the yep. Falakusi so so he can you know uh, uh, okay <laughs> so yeah that's what happens you know um, real time and and uh you know at the time you know i was just a scared little you know young guy in front of the crowd going in front there to give the geokusi mm -hmm. to make this thing a hundred dollars but now I look back, I was like, man, that's a competition. Yeah. It's a competition. A lot of pride behind it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's that's what it came to be. Certain families, we just knew, well, that family, man, they got it. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, and when Feng Ame came, yeah. you know, the Five Fei I was waiting for that family because they're gonna show up for the name of the Fang Akongo Me Kukisi. Mm -hmm. And and I felt like that that's just wrong. I, yeah. I, and I look back right now, and I I look back and say that that's not the giving that God wants us um, to do. Biblically speaking, Absolutely. it shouldn't be a competition. It should be out of of the cheerfulness of our hearts. Um, sis, what are some you know? For sis, we're coming to you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are Sorry, some? Hon. Yeah. What are some things? Um. So growing up in the CC um AS Church. I can relate to the chiefly talk because uh, they were the same way. And I think that um, was one of the main reasons why I was drawn to Pentecostal more because I mean, it was an English one too. So um, I don't understand the chiefly language as well as I hope, but um, yeah, I think that's why I was drawn to a different um, denomination is because they spoke um, basically English, basic, basically, and so I understood what they were talking about. Um, also, um, I wanted to piggyback on what you guys are saying because um, for the CCAS church, CCCAS church that I went to, um, they would announce how much the preacher was getting paid. And so um, it was basically the same where each family would give yeah. and it became a competition as well. And um, as a little kid, you do hear like it's going up to the thousands and it was mind blowing because it was like, oh, wow, this preacher or pastor in their sense is getting paid loads of money. And so the whole congregation is hearing how much they're getting paid. And so I feel like it creates an idea that um, pastors make a lot of money or pe preachers and or pastors in their sense and um <clears throat> and just don't i feel like that's just a wrong um idea to put out there that that impression as well to make it seem like they are there they make loads of money but at the same time i think that makes motivates some people for the wrong reasons and um that's just not right because you're supposed to be doing the lord's work and not for yourself and uh cavalry for yeah. every uh, <laughs> and <laughs> every year uh, yeah i mean um that's 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 one of those those things that that about our culture mm -hmm. about our culture yeah. when it comes to someone being a fight it out mm -hmm. uh i mean they have to they have to give a gift um that's, that's what I hate about our culture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, 
when when my dad died and um and um we had a little funeral here uh before we took him home and and um i knew my dad was here and my dad you know he was in the methodist church and i knew my dad was here uh, because he was sick and and um, never went to church anywhere here he would visit one church once uh, because of relations to my uncle being connected to it. Mm-hmm. But when my dad died, there were five Fife Owls that showed up at his funeral mm-hmm. that I have never met. And none of us have ever met. And, and, and uh, you know, they, they showed up because they know, mm-hmm. you know, they know the culture. Uh, maybe, some of, maybe some showed up because they love my father. Uh, but we know the culture, right? Yeah. When a Fife Owl shows up, the the family that's that's uh, that's mourning, mm-hmm. you know, their loved ones. In the Samoan culture, um, some families they they have to because it's culture. They have to make sure that no uh, servant of the Lord or Fife Owl or preacher or reverend, uh, reverend as they would use it, or pastor, that no one leaves without being acknowledging and a gift given to them. I think that's one of the, the biggest mistakes in Samoan culture is we have elevated the Fife Ao to the level of God. That, yeah. uh, like there's God and then the Fife Ao is right next to, right next to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only person right next to God is Jesus because he's at his right hand. right hand. And all of us are servants. It's in the word Fife Ao to five <laughs> to, to do the work to work, <laughs> to, work. to serve uh to be like jesus jesus came uh the son of man came not sure. to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for all and, and yeah we definitely see that um uh, that abuse mm-hmm. in in um in our culture uh for sure um absolutely now Talk about talk about the journey to the truth, right? Uh, was there something else you guys wanted to cover about the the? No. Well, let's let's talk about you know you grew up Methodist. You also you were half you were Hapa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were Afakasi. <laughs> uh, you were Afaka uh, Mikukisi Afa Mamunga, and and so um, uh, and and. Joanne, you started off well. You went. You're kind of like Flory's story, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ba- Baptist school, uh, CCCAS, and then Pentecostal. Yes. yes. So, talk about what led to you guys going back to the Word of God mm. and wanting to know the truth. Yeah. Um, so for me, I um. I would come up here to Hawaii when I was in high school, well, elementary going into high school every summer. And I do remember coming um, earlier on, like elementary years, and need to attend Word of Life with my sister. And then um, down the road, we came up for other summers and we were no longer at Word of Life. We were at, um, we were now coming to Honolulu Church of Christ. And um, Initially, my sister planted the seed from years ago, and um, I just remember coming for summers, and I would actually come with her to Bible studies, and I believe Ben May was the preacher at the time, and um, I would just sit in and just come for the heck of it at the time, because <laughs> I was less, I was young, yeah. and I just came with her to accompany her. And um, so that's where it initially began. I feel like the seed was planted there. And, <clears throat> and so um, I can't help but think that that was um, like everything that fell um, afterwards was to help align us to where we are today. And so um, I look back and um, it all began there, but then down the road in March, 2021 um my little brother eric's um was going i got baptized with my brother-in-law rafe who is from episode one so tune into that 
but um, so he got baptized, my little brother, but my sister and my brother-in-law were leaving to go back to Alabama and they needed someone to hold him accountable and have him um, attend Bible study on Wednesdays and then worship services on Sunday. So um, my two other sisters that I lived with, they were um, busy and working a lot. So I took up that role of bringing my little brother. And so um, I was bringing him to Wednesday Bible studies and worship. And from there, I'm just constantly sitting in the services and listening to the preaching be done. And it was weird because I'm the adult holding this teenage boy accountable. But at the same time, I'm realizing that I should be holding myself accountable. <laughs> and um, I wasn't baptized at the time, by the way. Going into May 2021, we decided to get married. And so I, um, I wanted to do premarital counseling. Tony was totally against it. And so <laughs> I just forced him to go. And I said, we need to go before we get married. Um, I reached out to Flori um, for someone to like who we should go to. She gave me two options. She gave me the Collies in Huntsville and Lima, who was <laughs> here. And at the time, <laughs> Tony um, was kind of full of pride. He didn't want to meet with another Psalm one man and talk about his <laughs> life. But I was like, oh, I'm cool with Lima because he's here. He's local. And I'm like, and I know Lima, he's married to Athena. Yeah. So it's like, oh, How are you well, related to Athena? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I was like, okay, we're going to go and ask Lima if he can do it. So uh, we asked Lima to do premarital counseling. We did premarital counseling and there um, we kind of gained some comfortable, a comfortable relationship with Lima. And I mean, we're so grateful for that because we, um, during the study, it was weird. We wanted to live the biblical standard of marriage, but we weren't Christians at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to know my role as a wife and I wanted him to know his role as a husband according to the Bible. And so that was also another way of us slowly getting into um, the Church of Christ and being comfortable. And so we got, a com we got comfortable with Lima to the point we asked him to officiate our wedding. And keep in mind, we're not Christians yet. Yeah. That was my first wedding first as one. a minister. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to say it's going to be long. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Go, go then, for it. Um, we get married in June 2021. October 2021, I lose my father. Oh, sorry, September, September 2021, yeah. I lose my father. October 2021, he loses his mother. Mm -hmm. And so we were on, the, this was during COVID, by the way. Um, in November, we head home to American Samoa um, to attend his mother's funeral. And um, I stayed back until March. And so um, he ended up coming afterwards and um, when we got back, um, Lima was going through the back to the Bible booklets mm -hmm. during worship. Yeah. And um, we were constantly showing up to church by that time. And so we were sitting in on during those lessons. And funny enough, we were following along. <laughs> and so we're actually listening to you. Yeah, we were listening <laughs> to that one. And um, we got to learn a lot of things that we didn't know about the Bible through that. And so after that, um, we were prepping to go back to American Samoa mm -hmm. for, my mom, for my dad's one year anniversary. And right before we were leaving, Lima had reached out to Tony and asked if we could have lunch. And so we were like, oh, we'll do it when we get back because we have to go to Samoa. So when, um, at the time though, he didn't, <laughs> I wanted to meet with Lima, but I was like, okay, we'll just have to do it when we return because yeah. I needed, I started feeling the urge to study. <clears throat> so it's and, August. Yeah, August. that's August. Yeah. And so we went home, we came back, and then um, I had this thing where I kept telling Tony, um, 
faith, <laughs> faith without works is dead. And Tony kept saying, no, it's not. So I was like, okay, I can pull up the scripture for you. And he's like, okay, pull it up. And I said, okay. So I pulled it up for him. And I knew right then and there, I said, my husband needs to study the word like mm -hmm. he needs to. So um, we went to lunch with Lima. Lima didn't even say what the lunch was about. It was just, we're, let's, go to, let's go to lunch. So Wasn't we went to- lunch. Good, <laughs> we good went, food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we went to Lilia Bakery. <laughs> and um, we had lunch that day and, um, you know, tears were shed that day. And I believe um, at the end of our discussion, it was just a normal conversation. It was yeah. like, how are you guys doing? How's your marriage? Yeah. Um, at the end of that conversation, I, I, know, I remember Lima suggesting if we ever wanted to study, then we could. And I remember saying off the bat, yeah, let's do it because <laughs> um, I've been wanting to do it. And so... Um, over the course of losing my father, I started um, and learning the back to the Bible booklets, uh, I started questioning where I was going to go um, during after death. And I was like, OK, this is some scary stuff. I didn't want to end up in hell. Mm -hmm. And so that's what sparked my urge to study with Lima, because I was like, OK, I know I need to do something with my life if this is how I'm feeling. And so um, Eventually, we started studying with Lima, and three study sessions later, over the Bible, um, we got baptized. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah, that's that's a, that's how we got here. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to fill in some yes, of the gaps yeah. from the story. Yeah. You know, um, my wife pretty much nailed it. I she's a big she's a big reason she um. She's a big reason why, or um, how I was, how I made the decision to put on Christ. Mm -hmm. This is my wife. Um, yeah, to add on to what she said about, first off, the denial to um, study, oh, to have a premarital counseling. <laughs> yes, that, that is true. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie about that. I, I did, I was full of I did deny that I, I was full of pride. I did not want to share my problems with another individual, you know, share my problems. I basically look because, you know, it's like therapy, right? It's like therapy yeah. session, you know, men, you yeah. know, therapy. Men. Nah, men, yeah. Men. <laughs> men um, no need therapy. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I told my wife, like, premarital counseling is for for people who what, 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 problems yeah it's for people with problems we, we don't, don't have problems yeah, we don't have problems <laughs> yeah so already right there my my judgment and my 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 thinking was all clouded because and you can say it was pride because i didn't want to share but thank god yes thank god that she was able to pull me to the, um, our premarital counseling because two years in going on three since that no that for our marriage yes yeah going on three. year number three of That's our right. marriage it's we still um we still operate based off the principles mm -hmm. that were taught from that study from the word. yeah from the word the principles from the word that were taught on the roles of a husband and a wife and i'm so grateful what was another one your um the faith without yeah, works faith without <laughs> <laughs> yeah i want to add on to that too because I was a firm believer, and I know of a lot of people who think like this too, close friends and loved ones, where we think that we're going to get to heaven because of our good works, mm -hmm. because of the amount of good that you do. And I was a firm believer of that. Um, and I think you believed that God existed, and that was enough. God existed yes, and good works. Yes, yes. Um, Growing up, I did have a good understanding of, and my, my, my parents did a great, great job of, of instilling that, one, God is real. God is real. And two, Jesus was sent to die for our sins. So I, I had that cemented in a, in a way, right, in, uh, in my mental. So that's something, and we always would reemphasize that when my, my dad would sit us down, like, 
have a strong prayer life. You know, God is real. Uh, Jesus did come and die for your sins. So I had that grasp of understanding, right? So from then I thought, well, so I'm saved then, right? Mm-hmm. I'm saved automatically. And also the the faith without works thing. Um, yeah, I believe that, hey, I'm a great person compared mm-hmm. to this guy who's, you know, <laughs> like to, yeah. let's say, John, right? Um, random guy, for an example, John, this guy breaks laws. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely going to hell. But, mm-hmm. you know, with my clouded, you know, knowledge of not knowing the word, hey, I'm a good guy. I'm good to people. I obey my parents. Um, I'm a, I'm a great husband. It's, it's, I have to go to heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, you know? It's like if they ask you, um, are you going to heaven? Yeah. And you, 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 you pause for a little bit, be like, I do this, I do that. Yes, I'm yeah. This good person. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And that was my way of thinking. I, I legit, legitimately, legitimately thought that my good works, um, you do enough good works in life, it's going to get you there. Yeah. until she pointed it out in the in the book in the bible mm-hmm. and should we turn there we yeah, yeah, yeah let's go uh, there i think that's in james yeah so that's way. james james yeah. chapter two yeah and then james. i'll i'll go to ephesians so mm. so you can do james and then i'll mention ephesians because that's that's one of the passages too that come to mind when thinking about works for salvation <laughs> yeah <clears throat> yeah this this um scripture will always be a big part of our marriage because yeah. it's a big part of our marriage and it's also a big part of our conversion you know obeying the gospel uh, where should i start i think should we start from the beginning yeah yeah so i'll, I'll read from from verse 14 james mm-hmm. chapter 2 yeah. um so it says what does it profit my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? Which is what I believe. Right? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, "Depart in peace and be, and be warned and filled," but you do not give them the things which are needed of the body, what does it profit? Seventeen says, "Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead." But Someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. And then you skip forward to verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Yes. This is exactly what you pointed out to yeah. me. And then my brain was in a whirlwind. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, I need to read more Bible. <laughs> yeah. Faith, you know, faith there is, yeah. is uh, James is trying to, you know, the parallel um, definition of what James is trying to describe is found in Hebrews 11 in the hall of okay. faith. Yeah. Mm. It, it, it defines faith and it tells us in verse six, without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and then he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And then all the examples of people, right, by faith. And if you look at what the uh, what it describes, it doesn't describe belief. Mm-hmm. It describes action, action, right? And it's action motivated by belief. You know, um, uh, it talked about, uh, we could go there real quick, in Hebrews chapter 11, um, you know, you have Noah, you have Abraham, all the different examples there of of people who, by their faith, perform certain actions out of obedience to God. And that's what faith truly is. It's acting out in obedience towards God and doing what God said. Um, like, take, for example, I like... Uh, yeah, I like, I like uh, what, what the Bible says here in Hebrews 11 and verse 7. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, uh, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. In other words, it's saying here, uh, Noah, by faith, right, by faith, when God said to Noah, there's a flood coming, prepared an ark, right? 
Noah didn't say, okay, God, I trust you. I believe what you say, and I'm just going to believe what you say. Yeah. Right? Like Noah didn't do that. Noah needed to act. Mm -hmm. Right? God said, build an ark. Guess what, Noah? Grab the hammer and the tools. We, you have to build an ark. And that's exactly what he did. Out of, out, out of trusting God, he acted. He built an ark, which the ark led to the salvation of his soul. So, so what James is talking about there is, is active faith or acting faith. Um, what sometimes, and I want to touch on what you said, I believe my good works were good enough to save me. That's, that's Ephesians 2 taken out of context by people right in ephesians 2 uh beginning in verse 8 there uh the famous verse uh popular verse uh ephesians 2 and and verse 8 beginning for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself it is the gift of god not of works lest anyone should boast right and and so sometimes people uh hear uh, would would say, you know, um, uh, of baptism, right? The command from God of baptism. Some people say, well, that's a work. And according to Ephesians 8, uh, 2 and verse 8 um, and verse 9, I'm not saved by works. Mm -hmm. I'm saved by grace. Right. Now, now, the truth is we are saved by grace. That's what the verse mm -hmm. says, right? And what is grace? The The uh, salvation in Christ Jesus, God sending his only son to die on the cross um, and, and, and was buried and on the third day resurrected again for the salvation of the world. That is the picture of God's grace. He forgave us through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. So for by grace, what God did, right, in Jesus, you are saved, right? If someone asked me, are you going to go to heaven, Lima? I would emphatically say, emphatically say to them, "Yes, I'm going to heaven." <laughs> oh, are you too? Are you doing? Are you too good now? I mean, you do a lot of good things, so you can go to heaven. No, I'm going to heaven because Jesus died for me. I'm not going to go to heaven because of what I do. I'm going to go to heaven because Jesus died for me. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. There are works. Mm -hmm. There are works that we should be doing. The verse continues on for by grace you for by grace you have been saved through faith mm -hmm. faith is trusting god is belief in god which is a work according to the scriptures believing is a work right and and um uh, and then it continues not of works lest anyone should boast and then verse 10 says for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for what purpose mm -hmm. for good works so the good I do now, since I'm in the body of Christ, the good I do now, I don't do it so I can be saved. I do it because I am saved. I do it because of the grace that was shown towards me. And I want to show God that I'm going to be obedient to his word by doing what he has called me to do. You know, some of the things that he has called us to do just to for practical purposes. One, worship him in spirit and in truth. Two, go preach the gospel. Uh, uh, three, you know, go down the list of the fruit of the spirit, of uh, the Christian graces, love, kindness, forgiveness, all those things. Those are things we do, not so we earn salvation, but because we have been given salvation in Christ Jesus, because that is now our purpose. Right. So. So, yeah, you know, I definitely see that that, you know, I, you know, I believe, therefore, I'm I, I'm saved. Yeah. But even in, in James two, mm -hmm. the demons believed and they yeah. are not saved. Yeah. Right. Um, the, they tremble because they, they know the fear of God and, and the, the majesty of God. Um, now, I want to add to the story because. Because, you know, uh, they talk about um, the marital, uh, uh, premarital counseling. Uh, I'm just going to go tell you this, go ahead and tell you this. I am not a licensed uh, marriage counselor, right? But let me tell you, um, this is what I offer uh, to people. I offer to share with them what God says on the topic of marriage, um, which is, more important to me, in my opinion, than than what man has to say about marriage, right? 
And, and that's simply what we did. I shared with them from the beginning, marriage is for man and woman, not man for man or woman for woman or any other, any other perversions yeah. that are out there. Out there marriage God made for one man and one woman for life Genesis chapter 2 uh, verse 18 and onward right and we talked about the roles in marriage you know Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23 and onward so that's what we did in our premarital counseling and maybe you're thinking about getting married and and you you need help in that area I, I'll be of service to you you know I just want to share what the scriptures say not uh, um, understanding, you know, I'm married too, and and I have things to work on in my marriage. Marriage is a work, you know, and and I will say um, I'm very proud of these two because of you know the examples they are in marriage, being so young and and how much uh, they show you know respect for one another and love for one another among our our church family here. Um, but it was interesting, you know, for me. Uh, you know, when when uh, when Florian Ray freezed out and said, hey, I, uh, could you, you know, uh, possibly help them uh, with premarital counseling? I'm like, man, that would be the first for me. Mm -hmm. and, and so I started looking up what should I do and things like that. And I realized, you know what, share what the Bible say about marriage. Now, if you know me at the time, I was thinking not just marriage, I was thinking why well, you guys need to be <laughs> baptized for the forgiveness of your sins as according to the scriptures and so when we were meeting for our um for our premarital counseling and you know this now but at that time they they didn't know but i i had a plan i was like okay this will be my avenue to share the gospel with you you come to me with this very important thing for premarital counseling and in my mind, I was like, you know, I, I got to find a way mm -hmm. to introduce salvation in Christ Jesus into this, you know, uh, premarital counseling. And, and you know, I, we never really dove into it yeah. because eventually I felt like not yet. <laughs> you know, it, it, the more I Very prayed tactical. about it, you know, yeah. the more I prayed about it, I ended up saying, wait. <laughs> you know, I, just, I was like, focus on encouraging them helping with their marriage. Let's have a wonderful marriage and not put any other burdens yeah. on them uh, during this wonderful time of their lives. <laughs> and it turned out to be the, the wise decision mm -hmm. because God knows what he's doing. And, and, and as they share with you a, a, a couple months, was it a year later? It was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was it the was next year. year. Yeah. About a year later, we, we, they started coming back and, and I was noticing, you know, they, they kept coming back and I was like, it's time to go to <laughs> eat some lunch at Liliha it's Bakery. Um, and and uh, by the way, Liliha Bakery, um, the reason why I go there, uh, because mm -hmm. uh, a dear sister in Christ and her family, uh, they decided that that will be their ministry, mm -hmm. that that's, that's how they contribute to the work that, that they, yeah. ca they take care of. of of the meal lunches that I have with people because they know the purpose I have those meals. I'm not just over there enjoying a fine <laughs> yeah. meal, you know. Uh, it's a great meal. I mean, it's a bakery, but I have a mission. And every lunch I have, I, I have a mission. And the mission is, you know, uh, I want to get to know you. I want to be your friend. I want to genuinely be your friend. And ultimately, I want to talk about Jesus with you. I want to talk right. about your soul and your salvation. And we went through that study with these two and and uh, just saw them read the scriptures for themselves and come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. And and then, you know, that one day we had the study, you know, we we had to ask the tough questions like, mm -hmm. you know, now that you know what you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? And uh, did you guys want to talk more about that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. Um, did you want to? I can go first. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, I think uh, during that time, I, was, I wasn't I was sure if Tony was going to get baptized. Um, not that I didn't think that he, was, he wasn't he was listening or anything, but um, I felt like I personally was convicted, like strongly convicted. 
and I knew I was like, oh, I'm definitely gonna get baptized after this mm -hmm. um, Bible, study, like after we finished those booklets completely. We did the summarization of those booklets actually because red, yeah, because you went through all three booklets in um, the, worship service. That doesn't matter. Yes, yes that doesn't so matter. We yes. studied the other booklet and that one. Um, I remember coming. <laughs> we were on our second study. Lima had said next week. If you guys come, you might want to come with a change of clothes. You never know. And I was like, oh. very yeah. I was like, okay. I, and then I knew then and there, I was like, okay, I think the questions, the, are they're going to get harder. And to where um, it'll heavily speak about heaven and hell. And so, and also baptism. So when we came back the next week, I, I brought my extra clothes because I knew for myself that I was gonna, but Tony also brought his, I just wasn't sure if he was gonna walk out of that study baptized. And um, I honestly, when I walked in here, I wanted him to make that decision on his own. So I was glad he did that. Yeah. It wasn't solely because his wife is getting baptized and I wanna ride along, but it was because he made that for himself. Yeah. That decision. <laughs> yeah. I will continue to repeat the fact that she's a big reason why I I came to Christ, my wife. Um, so yeah, shout out to you. <laughs> but um the the study material and consistently showing up, you know, consistently showing up to worship. She she dragged me along and it, it got to a point where she was like, hey, it's time for worship. Let's, let's go to church. I'm, like, no, I'm ready already. So um, I'm looking forward to, to hearing the, the lessons, the, the back to the Bible lessons, because th those, were, those were key in mm -hmm. me making the decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those were, those were very good, especially when, when Jesus says in um, some of the, the, the scriptures, who, 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 who have sinned, right? All, yeah, who has all, sinned? Yeah, who yeah. has sinned? Mm -hmm. All have sinned. So, you know, we're, we're getting to those points where you were, you were given into the congregation on the uh, um, uh, nine nine a.m. Bible study. You know, you would go through that, and those are really great questions because they're so convicting. Right? Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're not part of the body, if you're not part of um, the Lord's church that He purchased with His blood, that's you. You're not, you're, you're sinned. You're you're still lost. You know, from the message that was shared earlier. And yeah, when you <laughs> when when you say, "Hey, this is our third study, guys, our private study." Mm -hmm. Yeah, Limo was very very assertive. Bring a change of clothes. <laughs> yeah. Like bring your change of clothes because he felt like we were close. And yeah, that latest study that we had, we were talking about baptism, and and we were we felt that. We were, yeah. What were you gonna add? <laughs> I would say I was very happy that day. Yeah. You know, I was I was very happy because because I went back to the wedding and I was mm. like, man, I can't believe it. This is happening and and you were you guys were getting baptized and and you know for for me I was like, man, I'm so glad I waited. You know, <laughs> I I didn't bring this subject up. You know, uh, who knows what what would have happened? Mm. Uh, your hearts may be turned a certain direction if if I had. I don't know if I had brought that up in a very, um, not a stressful, but a, a very important time in your life. You were getting married, and that's important. Uh, it's no more important than salvation. Mm -hmm. But I understood um, the the weight mm -hmm. of wrestling with yourself about your own sins mm -hmm. and about you know not being right with God and about knowing the truth and obeying the truth. Uh, uh, it's heavy. Mm -hmm. It's heavy. And, and uh, that last study, I, I, well, the study before that, I just knew that when we went into the next study, I felt like only two things are going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's only two things are going to happen. The first thing is, or one of the things would be, you believe the truth and be baptized mm -hmm. like jesus said he who believes and is baptized will be saved mark 16 16. the other thing that would happen is you might say wait mm -hmm. or you might say no mm -hmm. and and you know for me it was like hey it's the word of god we're dealing with and 
And this is so important. The word of God has the power. It's not because they met with me. Yeah. It's, it's not me. Uh, it's because they met with me and we all looked into the word of yeah. God. It's the word of God that contains the truth. I'm just a messenger, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 you know, even though, you know, you know, I appreciate the, the show appreciation uh, for me, but we know, we know who has the power to save yeah. us. Um, it is God and it is through his word. The psalmist said in Psalm 19 and verse 7, that the word of God is, is pure, converting the soul, that the word of God can convert, uh, hence the podcast, yeah. converted, right? Um, can I add? Yes, yeah. go ahead. Um, I also think it's important. It was really um, important for us to attend the worship services where mm. we, um, we went through the Back to the Bible um, booklets or like just in general just attending worship service here uh, because I do truly believe in hear the word and that was where the conviction began yeah. was hearing the word it's not so much just sitting there and just listening to what the preacher is saying and just yeah. taking that in you have to look into the word yourself um, you have to fact check the people that are preaching because I feel like that's where a lot of people stray away I mean I'm speaking from experience as well, where I used to just sit in the crowd and take what the preacher is saying. Um, it's very important to um, fact check and discern because a lot of souls are in danger because of this case, you know, because people, the false teachers are teaching false doctrine or twisting the words to where it seems like um, it, it can relate and it's comforting to people's ears. And so I just think that was important to um, hear the word and look at it, um, look and read for yourself, because don't believe in man, man fail you. Yeah, yeah. Men, men will fail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll add to that too. Um, I think it was the covering the, the Bible, the, the text that you would share um, during our services that it was more that's what convicted me yeah like like my wife said hearing the word because faith comes by hearing romans 10 17 um hearing the word of god that too not only that but um like what you said consistently showing up we were embraced by <laughs> the church family yeah and that's a that was also a big yeah that was a seed for you that, that was a seed for me Plenty. too because it's the you know the body of Christ and the members of the church they they would treat us like we were members right mm -hmm. a key a, a key memory I'll, I'll share mm -hmm. and I, and I laugh I, I laugh about it all the time um, it was a month so we were already studying with you uh, Lima it was a month before we made the decision to be baptized we came to a worship service. It was done. We were about to leave, and then I'm just gonna name him, Brother uh, Will Will Preza. He 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 he's, he was a big um what what am I looking for? What word is that? He was encourager. A, he was a big encourager. And an example. Of yeah, and he, family. yeah, and he's he's a great example of um how a Christian should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's very encouraging to me because you know. He doesn't know who I am, right? Like it's all high and by. I see you. I've been seeing you consistently every Sunday, and Will, you know, he would always be one of the main ones to come up, shake my hand. And yes, say yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I love and appreciate um, Brother Will. And another thing was one Sunday we were leaving. He stops me. Hey, Tony, I, come here, man. I have, I have something for you. I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, backstory on Will, he collects sports cards. Yeah, and um, I'm not throwing this out there to be, uh, oh, uh, like, oh, I'm famous. Yeah. <laughs> just throw it out there. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I, I'm just because it ties into the story, right, y'all? But uh, yeah, Will, he, he collects sports cards, and he's like, here, man, the, the, this is for you. Is this the same, Tony? Because you guys name your name matches the name on this card it was 
my grandfather's professional rookie card and it was it was like refurbished it was laminated it was it was clean it was nice as if it was never used um that yeah i wow. appreciate that yeah that yeah volumes. yeah that spoke volumes to me because you know it's a hobby that he does uh, apparently it's evident that he he takes the time to mm -hmm. you know he puts a lot of time and effort into collecting these cards right yeah. and for him to just give it mm -hmm. to i would consider myself a stranger still you know mm -hmm. he's like i just see you at church but wow. yeah but for him to do that to me uh and for me and i even i was so excited that day i i shared it to my family like hey guys my even my grandmother yeah, she wow. she kind of teared up she's like hey look um this random church member has a card of dad right <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> yeah so it, that that was big for me and the church family is is great they that was a good display of how um the disciples of jesus should mm. go out to the world and act and do good together mm. when i when i was introduced to the church here um will was that person <laughs> to me um uh, him and his wife his mm. late wife uh, dear sister vilma love her love them still uh, him and his family um but what you just said about the baseball card yeah yeah here's something i i, I thought about about zacchaeus mm -hmm. right zacchaeus had to climb a sycamore tree to see Jesus, mm -hmm. right? Someone planted that sycamore tree, <laughs> you know. And and I don't know how how uh, I don't know how long it takes for a sycamore tree to grow, mm -hmm. but that tree was there for that moment when Jesus showed up, so Zacchaeus mm -hmm. can climb up on it that and tree. see him. You know, when I think about that baseball card, I think about that in that sense, right? In providential wise, like, and we'll never know this. I mean, we can say, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I, feel, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I mean, I feel like, what if, what if that was God's way of using Will's hobby of collecting cards? Yeah. You know, that it just so happened. You know that in the right time he had a card and it was in his heart to give it to you yeah and you're sharing that was one of those things that caused your heart to be more tender mm -hmm. yeah. towards the church mm -hmm. man that's that's powerful <laughs> yeah that's amazing and um what would be your advice to family members uh and friends to anyone out there that could be going through the journey that you have gone through uh and now you're sharing it with them what would you encourage them to do well first and foremost um if you don't have a strong knowledge of the word or the truth it's it's best to get started because when we started our premarital counseling boy let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> and even lima lima would look at like okay guys let's 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 turn to so and so me and my poor wife were like okay <laughs> we kind of need help here brother like, yeah. page so, number yeah page <laughs> yeah. number yeah. yeah so um definitely read your scriptures and if you don't if you don't know where to start, you know, um, probably find a a group, right? A group to just to to get yourself um, rooted and familiar with with the Bible. And putting on Christ was the, bit, the best decision in my life. Next, Amen. Yeah, next to um, marrying my wife, that was the best decision. <laughs> yeah, next to. Yeah, putting on Christ was the best decision of my life. Um, after after baptism, I felt so fulfilled. You know, for one, now I don't have a question on the faith without works. Mm -hmm. You know, 
you know, um, being part of the Lord's church, the, the church that he purchased with his blood, being part of that. Um, now I, I kind of have a, a clear understanding of where I, where I'm going to be mm-hmm. if I continue to live faithfully according to the scriptures. Um, I encourage you guys, I encourage, you know, friends, family, loved ones to, you know, go into the word. Um, yeah, this is, this is kind of tough. You know, I'll, I'll pick, I'll pick up back <laughs> after you. Um, I, I feel like I have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I say dig deep and seek the truth. Um, even if you think you know the Bible, I think there's always th- room for room to learn more. So don't think that you've um, reached the peak of your knowledge of the Bible. Um, also, learn and discern. Learn and discern. Mm-hmm. The more you learn about the Bible, the more you can discern about um, the false teachings that you're learning, the false teachers that are teaching. and um, For those that are in the race to true, to, to true, that, to true success, keep on keeping on. Um, in the words of Uncle Yona, <laughs> I think it's really important to um, also, we Christians are called to be the salt and the light of the earth. <clears throat> and so I also wanted to share that I have friends that actually ask me questions. They, they're active in their own denominations, but um, they've asked me questions about like being unequally yoked mm-hmm. or even um, like women preachers and stuff like that. So I am so grateful for the Lord's church because I've learned so much from it, right? I learned from the word so much. We dig a lot deeper than I've ever dug before. And I'm able to answer those questions Mm -hmm. according to the word because I'm learning, I'm learning. And just um, don't stop in your worship services. Like keep on looking into the Bible because the Lord will provide a way for the truth to come to you. You just need to keep searching. That's all you have. Yeah, I think I caught my train of thought now. <laughs> and um, another thing, especially for um, Psalm 1, you mm-hmm. know, especially for our people, like you said, we, we, we love our people. Um, break the traditions you know that's i think that's a that that's a big thing that's holding um people back from true salvation right or coming Mm -hmm. to the truth is see like for myself growing up um why do we go why do we go to this church oh it's because this is grandma's church dad's church mom's church um yeah break those have the determination to seek the truth yourself because grandma's church dad's church mom's church is not enough to oh won't save you in the end you know you can't find true salvation in those um it's through the word of god and of course being baptized and living faithfully and um yeah tradition does hold people back especially our people because you know, we're people of respect. We don't want to step on the toes of our, um, of our, of our ancestors, of you know those who came before us and set this spiritual foundation. But um, it's all, it's not according to the scriptures, especially if you're in den- denominationalism. And yeah, that's you. You have to break that. Yeah, break the cycle. Yeah, break right? the cycle. Make yeah. determine determine that. That you're not gonna follow the traditions of men, but yeah, follow the word of men. God. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to add a scripture to that in Matthew mm-hmm. chapter 15. Jesus said this, and it's so important that we that we understand this. Uh, and in Matthew chapter 15, and verse eight and verse nine, right? Um, and and the context is the the scribes and the Pharisees. Um, they had, you know. Um, questions for Jesus and his disciples because when they ate they didn't wash your hands and it was a question about washing hands and whatnot and and so uh in verse in you know in verse eight and nine Jesus kind of you know shares the truth about them uh because they were 
holding tradition to the level of God's command or tradition as God's commands, a man-made tradition as God's commands. And, and so in verse 8 and 9, the Bible says, Matthew 15, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of man. The advice that um, Tony and Duane share with us and with you all to dig into the word, it's because we, we have been there. We sat through the tradition. We, we sat through the churches and being part of churches where the traditions of men are taught as the commandments mm -hmm. instead of the word of God. And if you listen to what Jesus said, it's lip service, mm -hmm. right? Jesus says, these people draw near to me with their mouth, right? Um, you know, sometimes, you know, that type of practice. I, I've been there. I've come out of that. Uh, he says, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me the heart's not in it and and in vain the the meaning is the worship is worship is is worthless mm -hmm. you know you're showing up on sunday and it means nothing. nothing and it means nothing because you're not following the word of god but you are following the teachings of man and that's why the encouragement is to go into the word dive deep in the word and and um you know uh since you since you've been watching this podcast just come and have lunch with me already right you know, <laughs> let's, let's go eat lunch at liliha bakery it's, it's I, good lunch. I ask <laughs> ask the questions that you have uh because i can mm -hmm. share with you god's answers not mm -hmm. lima's answers especially questions about spiritual matters mm -hmm. right uh second uh, peter one and verse three God has given to us in this book, God has given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness right here in the word of God. Mm -hmm. I know you have questions about, yeah. about these things and I want to help you uh, show by showing you in the Bible and, and helping you read it for yourself. The answers to life's most important questions, which is one, where did we come from, right? Genesis 1. Um, verse 26, 27, God made man in his image, in the image of God, he made them male and female. He made it. We have people today asking questions about whether they are boy or girl, yeah. you know, male and female. Those are the two genders that God made. What's the other question of life? So, so where did we come from? What is our purpose? Why are we here? Right? Why are we here? Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13 tells us this. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is man's all that's our purpose to fear god and keep his commandments here's the other question where are we going when we die excuse me where are we going when we die jesus says there are only two ways and he tells us to enter into the narrow gate okay. for broad is the gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many go through it and narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life and a few will find it there's only two uh, um, destinations heaven or hell right and so the most important question then in life is what must i do to be saved and that's what our bible studies the the booklets that you that you heard reference it's called back to the bible is simply a systematic study of the word of god on the plan of salvation to begin with right because that's the main thing like you don't have our bible study is not knowing everything in the bible that's not what it is it's knowing the main thing first and then growing in our knowledge of the word of God. And the main thing first is salvation in Christ Jesus. That's why we have the Bible. Because God wanted you and me to know how we can be saved from our sins. It is through his son, Jesus Christ, who came and died on the cross for our sins. Any final thoughts, guys? Um, I Yeah, I wanted to piggyback a little bit on what you said about uh, raising questions um 
you have every right to raise those questions, mm -hmm. especially if your soul is in jeopardy. Yes. Um, your your soul matters, and so raising those questions, you know that something's wrong, or that something can happen to your soul, and so it's, I think it's very important that you <clears throat> you do something about it. <laughs> so raising those questions, I think one of the key things that um, we did during our studies, it, Lima answered our questions, but it wasn't out of his thoughts like he did input a little bit but majority of it was here let's turn to the scripture mm -hmm. let's turn to the scripture and i think that's what also helped us get here to where we are it was we were looking into the word and looking at it for ourselves it wasn't so much man telling me their opinions and i wanted to put that out there because um growing up in the different denominations a lot of it was man man's opinion and I see that still is a lot of opinions. Fact check. So um, you deserve every right to know the truth. You should um, contact Lima if you have any questions. <laughs> Please <laughs> and do. He yes. can meet with you via FaceTime or in person. And mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, that's about it. Thank <laughs> you so much for having us on this podcast yeah thank you thank you man, thanks for coming man <laughs> um, very thankful to god that that we get to do this mm -hmm. right um, and all because you you obeyed his will and and that's why we're here and that's our goal right go ahead man <laughs> <laughs> um the scripture that you just shared um the two gates mm -hmm. narrow and then the yeah, the bra that's that leads to destruction. Um, I want to share for you know the young adults, right? Mm -hmm. If um, who who have a chance, if you're tuning in right now, the young adults and teenagers um, fitting in is probably the, one of the biggest struggles that you're dealing with, right? Um, especially you want to be involved with the cool kids, right? Mm -hmm. um, everyone wants to be popular. Um, you you want to you know peer pressure you it's it's easily given into i just want to encourage you that following jesus is the coolest thing that you could ever do <laughs> <laughs> you know it's trying to be hip and you know following <laughs> jesus and that that is the, the the coolest thing you could ever do and doing the wrong thing is easy that's why it's, the gate is broad, right? That's why it's broad and narrow, narrows the way to life, narrows the path to life. Following Jesus gets you through that narrow gate, and that's the only way. So for young adults and teenagers, um, don't struggle with fitting in. It's okay to not fit in, okay? It's okay to not fit in. So yeah we, we're not meant to fit in. Yeah. <laughs> if you follow Jesus, you're going to stand out. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to fit in. Amen. Uh, you're going to look like light in the darkness. Um, you are going to be light in darkness and the salt um, of the earth. And that's what he has called us to be. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you so much for, for you know, tuning in. Um, if, if there's any questions, if there's any interest in a personal Bible study, use the information below reach out to us uh, reach out to us uh, we want to help you because we love you um, we want to share the truth with you um, god bless you and look out for the next episode of the converted podcast take care